Now, let's go into space. Four civilian astronauts have embarked on a daring mission. Earlier today, Elon Musk's company SpaceX launched its Polaris Dawn mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The four-strong crew is traveling further into outer space than humans have ventured since the Apollo moon landings half a century ago. The crew includes a billionaire tech entrepreneur who's part funding the mission, and they're due to perform the first ever spacewalk conducted by private citizens. We can see the crew enjoying... Let's have a look at this with uh, space expert Keith Cowing, who's editor of nasawatch.com. Uh, welcome back to DW, Keith. So, uh, is this where we are now? Can anyone launch a space mission if they've got enough money? Well, welcome to the 21st century. I mean, it was uh, it used to be you had to be a government government employee for a giant country uh, to go into space, and now you've got a lot of entrepreneurs who've become multimillionaires or billionaires, maybe a trillionaire soon, and. They grew up, and I'm, I may sound facetious, but they grew up watching a lot of science fiction, and they don't know any better than to try and make it real, and they've got the resources to do it. Elon Musk has uh, more money to play with than many countries' space programs. So factor that in, and if you can write a check for $100 million or $200 million, and you've got the skills, you too can go to outer space. All right, I'll check my bank, my bank balance. Um, just talk us through who's your on... Travel balance. Your, your travel budget. <laughs> That's true. Talk us through uh, who is on board. All right, well, we got, you mentioned before, you've got Jared, who's the billionaire. You've got Scott, who's the former uh, Air Force guy. Then you've got Sarah and Anna, both of whom are SpaceX employees. Jared is going to go do a spacewalk in the brand new spacesuit that SpaceX, he's helped SpaceX to develop. But also Sarah who works for SpaceX, who actually trains people to fly in the SpaceX spacecraft, she's going to do it too. So now you've got not only the person who trains astronauts but is going to go to spacewalk, they, she's been in space too. So what better teacher can you have? And she's young. She's got like decades ahead of her. So you know, we're getting this new class of people who get to go to space as part of their job early in their career and they come back and they're evangelists and they want more people to go up. So it's self-propagating. What's, what's involved in a spacewalk? Just talk us through uh, what they actually do. This is day three of the mission, I understand. Yeah, and what they're doing is they're going in a special orbit and they'll actually go even higher and they'll be further from Earth than any human has been since I was in high school, 1972. Uh, and that's important in and of itself. They're going through a radiation belt so they will get three months worth of space station radiation dosage in a week. So you got to factor that in. There's a little risk. But what they're going to do, and I'm deliberately holding something up that I got as a seven-year-old in 1962, it's a capsule. And it's a shape. It's got a hatch and people inside. And the way they used to go outside and do spacewalks wasn't with an airlock. They would open the hatch. Everybody had a spacesuit on. And one of them would go outside, do their thing, and come back in. That's exactly what they're going to be doing now, except uh, whereas this had switches, we now have a spacecraft with iPads and touch panels. It can fly itself, and the spacesuits we have are far more you know, able to do things. And the things you do when you're outside are much more complex. So it's, you know, it's something's old, something's new, something's tried, and something, something's true. Okay, but the, 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 the walk itself, they, they go out and do what? All right, well, you know, I've, I've had some weightless training, so for a few seconds, so I have a vague idea what that's like, and I've done the centrifuges, but it, diving underwater in a very heavy suit is probably the closest thing, and that's how they train the astronauts. But you open the hatch and you go outside, and now any motion on your part to push away, your entire body will go off. So you have to be tethered because you otherwise you'll float away. But it's very freedom that when you are weightless, it's very freeing because you can do just about anything. I'm moving around on purpose. And uh, if you look down at the earth, some people say, oh, wow, and some people get disoriented. So there's a, a very big exposure thing that happens to you when you're out there. And I've had friends who've done this and they say, then they realize, oh, yeah, I have things to do. And then you turn towards <laughs> the spacecraft and the things that you have to adjust. But they keep wanting to have a little time to just look at the Earth. And, you know, that's built in. I mean, everybody goes does a spacewalk. You're human. You want to look down at the Earth and appreciate it. So that's always sort of factored into the timeline that they follow.
Oh, that's going to be a heck of a selfie, isn't it? Um, listen, this is the second oh, yeah. attempt <laughs> to get the Polaris Dawn mission off the ground. Today's launch was postponed from August. What happened back then? Well, it, it had to do with, uh, there was a bit of a, an issue with one of the pumps but in, in, in the rocket, and they had to bring it down and work on it, but that was fixed easily. It's very busy in Florida right now, Spa and SpaceX is launching rockets one, sometimes two a day, and there's sort of a lineup of people who are going to go somewhere and when they have to go, and, you know, that delay caused them to pop out of one and look at back in. And if they didn't take off in the next few days, they might have had to wait a longer time because the launch pad that they're going from has to be refixed to launch a bigger rocket that's going to send a probe to Jupiter. So it's scheduling is what it really comes right. down to. But even though you have a schedule, it's weather. It's always weather. Quick word, uh, Keith, about the plan for getting them down safely. Uh, SpaceX has flown this Dragon spacecraft many dozens of times now. It's pretty much, if I use my old capsule, it just aims towards the Earth, it fires its engines to slow down, and then it just comes in. The parachutes come out, it lands, they pull it out of the water, they put it in the ship, and everybody gets out and photo Sim off. Simple as that. Uh, great talking to you as ever, Keith. Keith Cowan yeah. from nasawatch.com. Thank you so much. My pleasure.